everyone. How's it going? I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero. And today in Anime Reaction, watch the 18th episode of Bungo Stray Dogs. If you want to check out our reaction to the 18th episode of Bungo Stray Dogs, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we'd love hearing from you. And as always, if you'd like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga. And don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So in this episode of Bungo Stray Dogs, um, action. Yeah. We get the uh, Port Mafia threatening members of the guild, lower members of the guild, obviously, but members of the guild nonetheless, by um, the Port Mafia boss sending a letter that he wrote in crayon. And just stating flat out, we're going to destroy going three of your assets. Yep, we're going to destroy your boat. We're going to kill uh, uh, Miss Margaret. Yeah, we're going to kill Miss Margaret, Margaret, and we're going to kill Mister Medallion. I just love the irony of uh, that letter stating that after the greeting. I hope this letter finds you in good health. Right. <laughs> just yeah. And the fact that it was a fucking red crayon. It, it really fits with uh, with the boss's character there. It, indeed it does. Oh, guy is just, yeah. Has that childish, like, sense about him. But at the same time, when he gets scary, he gets scary. Yep. But, uh, yeah, so that's basically what happened. They sent in... Uh, send the Lemon Bomber. to Jiro Keiji. Hmm. Lemons! Kaji. Kaji. Yeah. The Lemon Bomber, which I actually didn't think that we'd see him again. I thought he was just a one off. Yeah, I did. Yeah, too. villain of the week. Yep. But great that they brought him back. Indeed. Because I I, I, I missed that maniacal laughter. Right. <laughs> that whimsical, you know, those whimsical lemon bombs. Uh, you know, I gotta I got say, Nathaniel, you should have just let Margaret turn him into dust. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that's a really kind of neat ability uh, based off of Gone with the Wind. There you go. Uh, it's a wind that weathers things. And you are literally Gone with the Wind. That was brilliant. Ashes to ashes. Oh, yeah, because the house burns down at the end of the novel. And yeah, well, man, she's a bit of a badass. Frankly, my dear, she don't give a damn. Yeah. <laughs> um, Unfortunately for her and uh, Nathaniel <laughs> Hawthorne here, uh, the Port Mafia boss uh, comes through on his letter. Mm. And how I just I also love it how uh, Ogai explains the whole situation. That perfect segue from Nathaniel's you know, like, dialogue and said, "So the enemy would think, but I've already played my strongest piece." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> and he sends in a Kitagawa. Who simply wrecks? Uh, wrecks actually, it was a good fight. battle. I mean, actually, it was a great God, battle fight, battle, back and forth. Very good. Because the way that they made the Scarlet Letter ability um, was basically the same as uh, the Rashomon ability, except he has to use his blood in order to activate it. Makes me wonder what the hell, what the hell is Akutagawa's? Like, where does that one come from? I think it's more uh, like a maybe a spirit or something like that. A more internal. So it might be a more uh, refined version. Well, yeah, I just don't I don't know enough about the author that Akutago is based off of. Okay. Or any of his works, so I can't really say. Yeah, the only time I've heard of the name of Shoman was a Akira Kurosawa movie uh, involving you know involving a demon based on that book. I'm starting to share movie name, so I actually haven't seen the movie yet either, so mm. I'll do some research on it. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it could, it, you know, it could be, uh, you know, like a demon ability. Mm -hmm. Which would explain the, why his uh, power, at least the little tendrils he generates, can take a sort of animalistic form when he powers up. Yeah. So. But yeah, all, all in all, a really awesome fight. Oh, um, man. Yes. Poor Margaret. <laughs> poor, poor, poor Margaret. Because let's see, she gets she gets um, speared in the initial attack by Akutagawa, mm -hmm. along with all the poor movers. The movers, all the mooks around them, really. Yeah. Well, everybody everybody gets shanked. Yeah. Everybody gets shanked, but Akutagawa uh, leaves no she witnesses. Gets, she gets shanked with the mooks. Yeah. Kind of sucks for her. 
and then she gets back up and starts weathering a uh, um, Gawa. She can only get his jacket though. And she can only get his jacket and then he spears her like a hundred times. Yeah. Okay, wow. maybe not that many times, it, but, but like 10 times. It hurts. Especially especially after, after that uh, exchange of words. You who knows nothing of humiliation and defeat, how dare you? Mm-mm. Right. Excuse me. It was, you don't know me. It was at that moment Margaret realized she fucked up. <laughs> Bitch, you don't know me. Yeah, except Step like a, <laughs> ex, except like a trillion times more menacing. Right. You get the glowing like Helsing eyes effect as just as shadows just like being warped by this aura of pure hatred. <laughs> that is one of the scariest and coolest sights I've seen in this anime. <laughs> you, just, you just know they're gonna get fucked up royally. Right. And it was awesome. But yeah, then she she ends up getting back up from that and jumps in front of an attack to save Nathaniel. Aww. Aww. And I'm assuming that's when she finally died, because Jesus... I know, right? I mean, who, who would want to come back from something like that? Just, yeah, the pain. Well, I, I mean, like, just all the battle damage that she took is just like, eh, I'm thinking she's probably dead after that. Yeah, probably got, like, shanked a couple hundred times. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, of course, the awesome fight. And, uh, of course, Akutagawa prevails. Yeah. But not before uh, Nathaniel kind of shows the real, uh, I guess, strength of the Scarlet Letter. The more he bleeds, the more awesome he gets. Oh. Ah. A moment for the Fallen. Continue. Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) I thought you were marking out a character like we do for uh, Magical Girl Raging Project. I am. Okay. okay. Doesn't mean you have to stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) But, oh, man. I used to probably leave a pause there. But yeah, um, I'm not going to get over that site for a while. That was just so cool. Damn, Akutagawa. Yeah, MVP in this episode. Oh my god. Yep, and then we get back with the detective agency. And things are far too peaceful in the hideout. Indeed. Uh-huh. Basically, we have the support group um, in the hideout. Yeah, so uh, it was like Nurse Akiko, uh, Rampo, President... Oh, and uh, Kenji. And Kenji. Uh, and basically, it explains that there's only one way into the hideout, which is to go through a tunnel. Mm-hmm. And they have the tunnel laced with security cameras. Security cameras, automated turrets. Uh, yeah, they, they pretty much wired this whole thing. Yeah. Might I add at this point, because I neglected to mention, in, mention it in the, in the reaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you, if you had the cameras in specific places you wouldn't need to put so many in one damn place right Hmm. i'm I'm just saying like they had like they had way too many 10 looking down the same place Mm -hmm. like all within a, a matter of feet from each other it's not how security works I think they kind of went a little bit overboard just to emphasize how important that passage is. I think that might have been more of an artistic uh, styling choice than, like, say, any sort of tactical choices. But as we've seen through a lot of anime we've watched, uh, with a few exceptions, they usually don't think that way at all. (laughs) Yeah, they also had a moment where it's supposed to be, like, really awesome showing all the cameras lighting up or whatever. But it's really dumb. Because if I had a security camera in a dark place where I don't, I don't want anybody to know that it's there, mm-hmm. I would cover up the recording light. Also, uh, the recording light is kind of a myth. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially with security cameras. Yeah. Usually it's actually not on the front either. Uh, if it is there, it's like, especially with cameras like that, where you get the like large body of the camera. Mm-hmm. Most security cameras box. nowadays are really small and they're kind of enclosed in domes. 
which is supposed to make it harder to see which direction they're actually pointing. Or kind of hidden in a little recess in the ceiling about the size of this pen. For yeah. some secret, really secretive ones. But um, for the ones that are the big boxes like they were showing there, it's usually on the back side you'll get uh, two lights, a recording one, and a tram. Hmm. Just kind of indicators to let you know. Yeah, just kind of indicators to let the person who installed it know. But if it were me, like especially in, the, in that particular situation, after I found out that it was working, I would just cover it up with a piece of electrical tape. There you go. Right, and then never touch it again. Yeah, I mean, for all we know, it's probably why, uh, I don't think that character is listed in here. Uh, but the envoy from the Port Mafia? Yeah. I think it's the reason why he was able to look, address the camera so casually. Yeah, I mean, basically, they, the whole security system was kind of set up dumb. Going for more flash than practicality, I yeah. think. Or like having having the gun set up with like laser sights. Not just that, but in the obvious immediate path. I would have tried to put more effort in the hiding those also. Not just yep. set in straight in line like Civil War battle formations. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, yeah, yeah, was... yeah, especially with the security, you know, with the automated turrets, instead of putting a red laser sight on them, you could put a um, like an infrared sight on where you know, you can only see it if you're if you're wearing, you know, you know, specific goggles, or in the case of the automated guns, the the um, you know, just give the 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 camera that aims the guns a lens so that they can see the see the infrared instead of just a, actually uh, putting a light out there and letting the person know that you're aiming at them. It's just dumb. just a motion sensor. You wouldn't see the beam because it's not like a laser sight. Yeah. 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 I mean, just that. There you go. Any, if it moves, it gets shot. Yep. Pretty much. Uh, I'm just saying, if you wanted to have a sight on it for, you know, right, for, the, for an operator. Well, not not or, even for an operator. It'd be for the program to know exactly where it's pointing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just use infrared. Night vision. Yeah. No, no visible lasers. But again, flash over substance. It's yeah. It wasn't necessarily to show that they have a good security system. It's to show that this guy's badass enough that their security system doesn't matter. Yeah. But uh, Nakira, the the guy in question. Okay. Um. He he just strolls on in, and his only mission there is to pass on a message. Uh, a message that. Um, they have sent two guild members to their probably human. The non-gifted office staff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they, they, they sent them to the, the non-human staff, I guess, house to, uh, I, they basically, they basically made them hostages. And at the same time, like... <laughs> Hostages and just bargaining chips, really. Well, yeah, basically the, the Port Mafia is trying to set up the guild and the agency to destroy each other because they they told the, the guild where the office staff from the agency was hiding. And then they, they told the agency where... Um, that the guild was sending people to the to where the office staff was hiding so they're trying to force a fight between the powerful uh you know the powerful people to get them to kill each other yep. as far as we can tell uh, the duo of uh, steinbeck and uh yeah hp lovecraft yep and as we find out towards the end of the episode or at the end of the episode i should say mm -hmm. they're about to be uh let's see they're about to be Intercepted. Intercepted by Kunikita and uh, Tanazaki. So, mm. should be an interesting next episode. I want to see Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Photogen. <laughs> I'm still very curious what they're doing with the whole Kyoko story. Yeah, where exactly is she? Because for all we know, she just kind of like wandered off. Yeah. Because she wasn't with Malops, she wasn't with Port Mafia. The guild didn't take her. 
just kind of wandered off in the day. I wonder if that's that probably what uh, Dazai and uh, Atsushi are dealing with at the moment. Okay. That'd probably be a good, good guess. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, pretty much it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but a lot of uh, Port Mafia badassery kind of showed them making their moves. Whereas last episode, it was a bit more about the, uh, about the guild. So now, uh, back to the agency, I'm thinking, oh, okay, with that dramatic rescue. We found out that Akutagawa is sick. Well, I think he's still dealing with his injuries that he sustained in the, um, in the fight against the sushi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he was pretty fucked up. So. But in the in the fight with uh, in the fight with Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, he he basically spat out blood, and, and not a little bit of blood, not like <coughs> oh blood, not no. not like tuberculosis <coughs> oh blood, no like <coughs> not, not tuberculosis, more like Ebola, right? <laughs> a charming image, yes. <sighs> but yeah, I hope. I don't know if that's going to be a recurring thing. Probably. Probably. Possibly right until his demise, or the, at least the resolution of his storyline. Which is going to kind of suck, because, I mean, Akutagawa is a really strong character, and yeah. I don't really want him to be we can... made any weak, just to make him feasible to deal with. Yeah. It kind of sounds like a future warping going on if he continues to deteriorate like this. But at the same time, there is hope, and I'm going to hold out for this, that maybe, just maybe, he switches sides. Switches hmm. sides, gets healed in the end. Kind of becomes a reformed sort of, you know, because, you know, the follow the steps of his senpai. Just finally join the side that saves people. Miss Killer Nurse would probably have the answer for Exactly. Right. So... But yeah, if, if he doesn't end up doing that, then he's a goner in a couple episodes where the review's going. At least that's my take on it. Yep. But let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. But that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. I'm Zero. And I'm Rizzo. See, see you, you next, next time. time. Click on my face if you want to see our talk show, Otaku Saga Talk. Click on my face if you want to see Otaku Saga Gaming, our gaming channel. And go ahead and click on the waifu to subscribe and check out our new and improved Patreon page.